Welcome to part four of School of Knock season three, overcoming target panic and buck fever. This is a huge week because by now you should definitely have that confirmation on how to make a good shot and also feel a lot of security and comfort in making that shot without having to worry about what that front pin is doing. Now this week, you're gonna get your sight back. So it's a big week, but don't go too fast. It's gonna be critical that you apply some of the same principles that we talked about last week and really make sure you don't try to jump ahead. This is a huge week when it comes to the ability of you backsliding if you try to go too fast. So it's gonna be critical that we keep the targets big and keep yourself close. And again, for this class and for this training, we're gonna still be thinking about that aim big so we can miss small because you trusting any float or any type of movement that you have to get that surprise shot is gonna be absolutely critical. Now, a few things that I'd like to warn you about, and these are critical to making sure that target panic doesn't come back, is don't pick targets that are too small too soon, and 100% make sure that you don't get sucked in to trying to shoot moving targets for novelty shots or a good time at the range with your friends. One of the things that got me into trouble was when you're at the range, everybody throws in a buck, you start trying to shoot a moving bobber or a ping pong ball floating around or whatever it is, then just like that, you're back to dealing with that target panic because you got a case of the yips for something so small. This isn't something that goes away quickly. It is gonna take continual training, continual repetition, and one of the things that I really want to urge you is to not change things continually as you're trying to do this. You really have to ingrain this process the same way continually over and over and over again for quite a long period of time before it's ever gonna become a natural and where you're not gonna to have to worry about that target panic bouncing back on you. Now they say it takes about 21 days to create a habit. So you are very close to creating this great habit of making good archery shots. So don't backslide. Make sure you aim big so you can miss small. Now, one of the things that you've probably seen on my targets is there's times where I've painted squares on my 3D targets. And obviously, if you followed all the seasons of our videos, you've always noticed my block targets that I also paint squares on. If there's times where myself or students are struggling with any type of anxiety in the shot, sometimes it helps for you not to be trying to center a circle circle or pin on circle, sometimes just having that ability of a square to float around more within that will allow you to have some comfort. Some people even feel anxiety on certain colors. So there's times in my past where shooting at the yellow face with the red and blue circles around it were definitely a struggle for me and I really had to just make myself aim at black and white targets, or a lot of times for me, I struggle less on brown and black targets than I do when I was aiming at the yellow. That was something that took me time to be able to do so that I didn't have any anxiety while making that shot. But again, for me, started close, had to work my way back. So when you look down here at the multiple different targets, the big one to the right is always for people that come here that we're working on target panic and trying to avoid struggling by trying to focus on aiming too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be here at about 10 yards and I'm gonna focus on just aiming anywhere within that circle. 
So cut your distance in half and double the size of the circle compared to normal training. So a paper plate is actually a very good training tool because if you're anywhere within that paper plate as you're letting your pin float around, I'm totally fine with it. You should be fine with it. So we're gonna aim big so we can miss small. This is the first time pulling our bow back with a sight on it. And once again, you have the tools and you also now have the knowledge to be able to tell yourself what you need to do. So if you were to guess, what do you think that should be? Right now, what you should be telling yourself is exactly what you need to do to make a good shot. You should focus on what you're gonna be doing behind this line. And you should also be telling yourself, it doesn't matter what the front is doing. If it moves around, cool. I wanna hit what I'm aiming at. I don't wanna be afraid of missing. So don't aim off the target and try to make a shot. Allow your pin to be within the target. Allow your subconscious to want to peek at times and see that that target in the center of that target still back there. Trust all that, let off that safety, and just continue to pull until you have that first surprise shot looking through your bow, looking through a sight picture as well. Now, one of the things that you can do if by chance you've pulled back and you've tried this and you start to feel some anticipation or some anxiety because you're now looking at that front sight are a couple things. One, if you have the ability, you can actually remove your pin from that sight to where you're just centering your peep, centering your scope housing, and just looking at that whole big spot through the center of that front sight and just allowing that movement to happen, executing the shot while still acquiring a front sight rear sight. Now, another thing you can do too is go back to the exercise of shooting off the shot trainer, but go ahead and use the small knot that's on the top of the shot trainer and pretend that is your aiming pin. This was something that as my wife and my son were progressing in shooting tension-based releases off of the shot trainer. I just told them, okay, if you're gonna exercise good shots, go ahead and pick a spot on the room, use the top of that little knot as your aiming device, and just do your best to trust the float and pull through the shot. And believe me when I say they've probably shot more times with that string than I probably ever made them shoot with their bow. But again, that totally ingrained positive confirmation that whatever's going on in the front and even not even thinking about a sight wasn't near as important as the dynamic pull that's happening behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and make one more shot here. And again, I'm gonna do the same process for those of you that are shooting a wrist strap. Again, you should be thinking continually about positive thoughts and understanding that all you need to do is breathe, do your best to acquire the target, trust the float that you have, and just focus on continual movement Counting if you need to. Another exercise that works for some people is having a mantra that they continually repeat in their mind. For me, there came a point where I started making good shots continually for the first time in my life. I was able to go to tournament after tournament after tournament and never dealt 
with making a bad shot because I rushed it or because of target panic. And I remember that my mantra ended up becoming, I shoot X's because they make me feel good. And for me, through those drills of counting one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and my shot would go usually anywhere from four to six seconds, not because I wanted it to, but because I was being consistent and that's when it was going off, my mantra became, I like to shoot X's because they make me feel good. And a lot of times by the time I got to the word good or somewhere just after that, my shots were breaking and I was able to visualize and then see a perfect shot transpire down the range. So we're gonna go ahead and make another good shot with the wrist strap. Disengage the safety and pull through the shot. If you've really struggled with buck fever and target panic, and you've also been someone that's had friends around you that recognized that, and believe me, I was that guy at a time too, where I became the joke of here he goes, he's double clutching the trigger. Trust me, the best thing you can do if you're dealing with that is take this class away from the crowd and don't get suckered into those types of things that are gonna make you feel anxious before you're ready to move on. Now, one of the things that can definitely sucker you in to having a little bit of target panic is when you start to get groups down range that you yourself are impressed with. And a lot of times someone else next to you just saying, holy cow, look at that group. It might be the time where it triggers in your mind. Oh yeah, I want to put this last arrow right in that wad so this guy can really see this when I go down there. And usually if you're not ready yet, and if you're thinking about the wrong things, that's when you end up having that target panic slowly creep back, or the fact that you start to over aim rather than continue to pull, and you'll find that the arrow doesn't in fact hit where that group is. One of the things that's fascinating about archery is that as you continually realize that what movement you're seeing in the front really doesn't have near the effect of what you think it would compared to what's happening in the back, I think that you'll continually realize that when you believe that your pin wasn't even on the target and all of a sudden you see the arrow go in the center, you're gonna believe that there's no way that's possible until you start to understand that as long as you're making good shots back here, the results downrange start to take care of themselves. So for this week, believe me, you're going to have a few times where you might struggle a little bit when you're looking through that sight picture. Just remember, if you ever feel the anxiety, some of the best shots you can make is going ahead and putting that safety on or taking your finger off the trigger so that it's safe and letting your bow down. Some of the best shots you can make are the shots that you never made, especially when you know that you're struggling with that anxiety inside. Again, you're going to have times where you might struggle. Best thing to do is identify, take a step back. Don't be afraid to say, okay, I had a few times where as I shot at the longer distances, I had a few times where I made a bad shot. You know what? I'm not gonna shoot from back there or that target that I'm shooting at is just too small when I'm this far away, I feel anxious when I'm doing it. I normally have large dots painted on my targets at lar longer distances simply because I'm not afraid of aiming at a larger spot because I know if I'm trusting my float within that larger spot, 
most of the time the arrows end up in the center of that thing that I'm trusting my flow at at anyway. So I'm totally okay with it. Make sure you never try to go too far too fast. Follow all of these processes as we've said. Lastly, here today, when we finally started with our site, we're right back to a close distance. So for your homework here forward, and believe me, you haven't graduated this school yet because this is gonna take time and the last session of this school is gonna be when we're able to go outside and see how you do once we incorporate some training and some practices at the longer distances. So for now, what I want you to do is start here, go ahead and put in 100 or 200 arrows or maybe a week or two weeks at a distance until you totally feel like there's no way that you have any type of anxiety or frustration at this distance and then go ahead and give yourself a little bit more distance. Walking this target panic back is gonna be a practice that's gonna be really critical. Just keep in mind, nothing worth having happens easy. So this isn't gonna be an easy thing either. It's gonna take some time. You definitely have to think to yourself about what you know is a good shot whenever you start to feel that sudden anxiety or that sudden fear. You have to focus on this process. Again, the prize will come if you focus on the process. But if your focus is on the pin and on the prize, then the process normally just goes out the window. And if you do that, you're gonna struggle with ever defeating target panic. If you apply these practices, these routines, these training principles, and more importantly, if you really think about the mental aspect and apply some of the things that I talked about and continue to confirm those to yourself and identify when yourself, when you know one of these topics that we've talked about in these first four classes come up, then you're going to get over this and you're going to be the best archer you can.